This is the Before You Read lecture on Philemon. Before discussing Philemon in particular, it is important briefly to comment on how Philemon has been grouped with some of the other Pauline writings. Along with Philippians, Colossians, and Ephesians, Philemon is often referred to as one of the prison epistles, since it makes mention of Paul's writing from prison. In addition to this, scholars have noted certain connections between Philemon, Colossians, and Ephesians. Both Philemon and Colossians claim to be co-written by Paul and Timothy. In addition, there are similar greetings, that is to say, there are are several of the same people who are greeted or mentioned in each of the three writings. Finally, scholars have recognized close similarities between Colossians and Ephesians, which has led some to suggest that one is the copy of another. To begin with our discussion of Philemon, let's start with a brief orientation to the letter. First, it is a personal letter. This is the only undisputed letter of Paul that is directed primarily to an individual. In this letter, Paul expresses his concern for Onesimus, a slave who has been separated from his owner, Philemon, who is also the recipient of the letter. Philemon, we learn, is a friend of Paul's and apparently the owner of Onesimus. Paul mentions that he writes from prison, but it is not clear which imprisonment he has in mind or at what point in his career Paul wrote this letter. Second, slavery in the New Testament. There are a few comments that I would like to make about slavery in the New Testament. The first thing to say is that the New Testament takes the institution of slavery for granted. That is to say, the writers of the New Testament under sl understood slavery to be just as natural as you and I might understand things like democracy or freedom or capitalism. We see, for example, in the parables of Jesus, which mention slaves. We see this in the household codes in the New Testament that lay out the proper behavior or duty of different household members, including slaves and their masters. And we see this in the metaphorical use of slavery, as in Paul's self-designation as a slave of Christ. Second, there are a number of ways that one could become a slave in antiquity. Of course, you could be born into slavery. You could also be made a slave as a punishment for a crime or as a result of being conquered by the Romans. Finally, you could sell yourself or members of your fam family into slavery because of financial debt. Finally, a word about manumission or freedom from slavery. It is important to note that those who had been manumitted, that is, free persons, were not always in a better position than they were as slaves. In addition, former slaves often remained a part of the household even after manumission. And finally, those who received manumission did not automatically become Roman citizens. And so, um, even the desire to be set free from slavery, to be manumitted from slavery, which might strike you as a self-evident good, was in itself not necessarily a better situation than slavery. Here is a brief and basic outline of the letter. You can see that it has the basic components of an ancient letter. There's the salutation, prayer and thanksgiving, body, final greetings, and a farewell. Finally, for this lecture, a few things to keep in mind as you read. First, pay attention to Paul's approach. As you read, it is really important that you pay attention to how Paul approaches Philemon. Here are some questions to consider. What do you notice about how Paul approaches the problem? How does he position himself in relation to Philemon, and how does he describe Onesimus? Second, an ambiguous request. What is the benefit or favor that Paul requests in verse 20? Is it Philemon's gracious welcome of Onesimus? Is it a transference of ownership so that Onesimus would become a slave of Paul? Or is it that Philemon would set Onesimus free? These are questions that demand our sort of interpretive discussion and consideration. Finally, enough. When you finish reading Philemon, I encourage you to pause and to consider briefly whether or not Paul has done enough to help Onesimus' situation. Has he done enough to ensure that Onesimus' well-being is protected in the future? And, perhaps more critically, given the long-term biblical support for slavery in this country, reflect on whether or not you think this letter has done enough to speak against the institution of slavery. All right, that is all that I have for this uh, brief before you read lecture on Philemon. Though it's a short letter, I think it's an important letter and one that I hope you'll spend some good time pondering as you read it. Thank you for your time.